Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some very interesting things about textures. This was actually a question that we got from our live streams. So yeah, let's get to it. I'm super, super happy to be back and super happy to be here. Let me just adjust my camera a little bit because I think it's a little bit off center. There we go. Nope, too much. <laughs> Sorry. That's better. That's a little bit better. Okay, so um, we got a message from one of our viewers. His name is Divyang Katasiya. And he shared this. Uh, he was trying to share this during the live stream, but we couldn't find a way to get the image. So I got it a couple of uh, hours later. And he was wondering, how would, it, how would someone create this asset but change the resolution at which this detail like happens, right? Because as you can see, it's a very nicely detailed and sculpted asset. I'm not sure if it's sculpted or modeled. It looks a little bit more modeled than anything, but he's wondering how would we do this sort of things? So I don't have the asset with me, so we're gonna have to recreate it. Probably not in like full <laughs> full effect, but I'm gonna show you how this sort of things will, um, or how would you would normally tackle something like this, okay? So let's say we want an asset to have a painted texture, but we want certain parts of the object to be um, to be working with uh, like a tileable texture, okay? So I'm gonna do this super, super simple. I'm gonna do like this sort of like sci-fi-ish like a uh, chair. So let's extrude this face, move it back, and then let's extrude like here. Kind of like a massage table or something. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, it's more like a 90 degree angle. So let's just grab this guy's right here, and then grab this guy's, rotate them a little bit push them forward. Let's go to a right view. It's going to be a little bit easier to, to kind of get the shape right on the right view, trying to keep the, the volume as, as nice as possible on, on all sides. There we go. So imagine this is like our, our seat, right? Again, I'm not going to go super in detail about uh, modeling. It's more about, it's going to be more about like the sculpting side of things. So uh, this thing, as you can see, has, has like several sections and we can actually model some of these sections. So let me like add one line right there and one line right there. And then let's add like, uh, let's say one there and one there, there we go. So here's where the first part of the modeling process is gonna come into play. First, we need to smooth this thing out, but I'm not just gonna smooth it like this because if I do that, we're gonna get like a super soft uh, surface and I wanna have a little bit more of a hard edgy sci-fi-ish effect. So I'm gonna grab all of the corners here, like all of the outer borders of the object and we're gonna bevel this, okay? Two segments and a small fraction. We're already, you, you guys know I, I love doing that sort of trick. And uh, there we go. So now we can say mesh, a smooth, and this is gonna create like a smooth sort of like sci-fi-ish thing, right? So let's say we want to have something similar to what we have here, like a couple of panels where the the detail of those panels is going to be a little bit nicer than the rest of them, right? So this sort of technique, let me lower the music volume because I'm listening to some music while recording and uh, it's distracting me. So uh, this technique that I'm showing, it only really works. I mean, you can use it for games, but it, it's a little bit more for like cinematics and commercials and stuff like that, because we usually have a little bit more texture resolution here, but it's, it's not unique to it. So let's say like this band right here and this band right here, and maybe like this section right here, like on the, on the top section, like let's say all the way to like this area right there. Like even those ones I, I really like. Let's say all of those things that I just selected are gonna be an area that are, that's gonna have a different texture, okay? So we have two options. We can have two separate models or we can have two separate texture sets. I'm gonna show you the model first because I think it's a little bit nicer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab uh, this guys right here, isolate them. And then I'm gonna grab all of the edge loops that we have right here, like all of the edges. So I isolated the, the selection, the faces that we have there. And as you can see, it's gonna be a little bit easier to select the border because it's really, really important that we select the border in this particular case. See how I'm selecting and deselecting things. So I need only the border selected. There we go. So as you can see, we're going through the whole border. Perfect. Now we can go out of the selection. As you can see, we have that one. Let's deselect that one real quick. Let's deselect that one. Just make sure that we're only selecting the things that we want. So over here, um, Okay, it tried selecting a couple of more things. That's fine. I'm just gonna select like this things right here. Let's very carefully 
deselect a couple of these guys right here. You can click and then sh uh, control double click on, on the next one or shift double click or sorry, control double click. You should be able to deselect those ones and then this ones. Uh, they were about like right here. Or you can just go into wireframe mode and manually deselect what we don't need. There we go. So as you can see, we have this very nice selection of the border of the object that we want, right? So I'm going to go into mesh, edit mesh, and I'm going to say detach. And what that will do is it will separate that island of faces from the other one. Okay, so it's it's pretty much treating two different islands. It, it, it kind of like cut through the edges, which is important for what we're about to do. Because what I want what I want to do now uh, to create that sort of like a uh, like cushion border is I want to grab this guy right here. There we go, which is like the outer side. I'm actually going to split them. So I'm going to say mesh separate. So there are different uh, meshes. And then this one, I'm going to go into the border, which as you can see, very nicely goes around the whole border. I'm going to do an extrusion and I'm going to do a little bit of thickness, just a little bit, not that much. We can do a little bit of offset as well. It's going to help. So just a little bit there. Make sure that the corners are not like clamping or anything. That looks good. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to select this guy, select the whole border and hit control E and get it in like this. There we go. So now when we grab, grab both elements and press number three, you're going to see that we get this very, very clean, and nice seam. So it actually looks like when you are building a cushion or like a sofa or something and you get this very, very nice effect. Now, if we wanted this areas, for instance, to be like a little bit sharper, that's super easy to do because we only need to add like a support edge over there, a support edge over there as close as possible to the other one. There we go. And then this one right here, we need to add a support edge right here right here, right here, and right here. So now when you press three and three, you're gonna see that things look good. A little bit of a pinch there, but you know, it's just an option in case you wanna do that. I'm gonna keep it round because I think it looks cool. And now it's where, where, where the texturing thing will come into place, right? Because we, we know that we can bring any of those elements and I am gonna bring them into substance so that you guys can see how we would approach this sort of thing, okay? So here's the deal. Um, this guy right here is going to be like uh, similar to uh, Divjank's uh, chair. It's going to be the one with colors and stuff. So I need to create UVs. I actually need to create UVs for both of them. So I'm just going to grab both. I'm going to use my UV technique, which we will have a more in-depth video in this week. So I'm just going to delete UVs, grab both of them, UV, planar mapping. Um, this one, as since it's uh, like a flat surface, it should uh, unfold very nicely. Like if I were to just... Like grab the whole thing, hit unfold and unfold. You're gonna see it, it unfolds quite nicely. It is giving me this sort of like a uh, little bit of a weird effect there. We could try to, um, what's the word? We could try to to flatten it or, or straighten it to, to have like a cleaner uh, effect. Or uh, if you want to, you could also like create a small cut over here. It, it, it shouldn't really affect the texture, but it might a little bit. So I'm, I'm actually gonna keep it like this, even though it looks really, really weird. Uh, and then this piece right here, there we go. This piece right here uh, also is like very like flat and stuff. However, I do think we, we could use a couple of cuts here. So I'm gonna select like this edge right here, this edge right here, this one, and then all of this one that goes across the whole thing. There we go. And probably see, see how I'm going on the on the like the corners. That's always uh, one of the like the rules of thumbs that you need to follow with uh, with UVs. You you, you kind of want to have them on on corner pieces. Like for instance, this corner piece right here would really benefit from a from a little cut there. So there we go. We cut that one, and that's it. So now we can grab this thing. Control U. It's the shortcut for unfold, and as you can see, that unfolds very nicely. Now this one, this is where the important thing uh, comes into place. We're actually going to be using something called material slots or material sets. This means that this object will not have one material. It will have two materials because we need to solve the issue of having like a really, really dense, like a mesh on or, or not mesh, like texture uh, effect on, on certain parts of the chair and then still keeping like a really high resolution. Okay. So this one right here, I'm going to press control L to lay them out. So that now they're in, in a single uh, section. This will have a 4k map. And then this one, we should be able to do something similar. I uh, just want I just need to grab it and press control L. I kind of want to have this one be straight. So even if I need to make it a little bit smaller, I think we can do this. Now, again, you can try doing the straight UVs. Let's see if it works. Eh, kind of works. 
not really right so i mean another thing we can do is we can try to go into like uv shells or uv uvs actually like all of these points and you could try to manually like flatten this as nice as possible here's where we're turning this thing on might be a good idea so let's turn it off just a second rotate this and bring them in there we go so as you can see it looks a little bit nicer here there's a little bit of distortion here on, on these areas so again here's where if you really want to be like super super precise like modifying all of these things might be a good idea here's now now that we've like kind of like straightened everything a little bit more it should be a little bit easier to straighten there you go see that so now everything looks really really solid so it needs a little bit of tweaking. So I wouldn't say that's super advanced, but just needs a little bit more tweaking. And uh, and that's it. So this will be its own material. And here's where one of the most important parts um, needs to happen. First one, first, uh, I'm going to delete histories, interpretal, first transformation, and all of those things. This guy, we are going to rename it, uh, the objects. So we're going to call this um, like chair base. And this is going to be like chair details. And we are going to assign a new material to each one. So this one will be M underscore chair details. And then this one will be M underscore chair base. Oh, there we go. The reason why I like to add the M is just to know that that's the material because you're going to have a lot of things that are named very similarly. And it's important that you do. Now, you can actually combine them. You can actually combine both objects. So you say mesh, combine. And even though if we were to check the UVs, they will be overlapping. Since they're different UV textures, because each one has its own map, that's fine. So we can get away because we're going to be exporting two different sets, okay? So we're breaking one of the rules about UVs, which is never overlap UVs, because the UVs have different uh, texture sets. And you can see that here on the options, on chair details, chair base. Which, by the way, just quick uh, little uh, detail for my Blender friends. This is exactly the same thing, uh, or you can do the exact same thing here inside of Blender. I'm just going to do this very, very quickly. So I'm just going to add, like, a shader here. So I'm going to say, like... Um, Let's do like a like a new material. And this is gonna be like, I don't know, like a pink material. There we go. And then I am gonna go into face mode. I am gonna select a couple faces, like let's say these three faces, and I'm gonna click this plus sign, which is gonna add a material slot, and then I'm gonna create a new material on that slot, and I'm gonna assign that material slot to those specific faces. Let's paint them green. So now uh, like certain parts or certain elements from my object will have one texture set and other parts of my object will have another texture set. So it's a very similar process, slightly different interface, but it's the same uh, principle, okay? Just just want to throw that out, uh, out there in case you guys want to follow along once we go into Substance. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to export the selection. Let's go into our Assets folder. We have a lot of assets. We should change this to 2022, right? <laughs> I'll see if I do that because I've been working on this one for so long that it's, uh, it's already ingrained on in my brain. So we're going to call this Chair uh, Texture. And let's just save this as Chair. There we go. Let's open Substance uh, Painter real quick. And yeah, by the way, guys, if you're just seeing this video and you did not see our video from yesterday, uh, make sure to go back. We go over a couple of the things that we're going to be covering throughout the month. And there's also a couple of techniques that might help you achieve your New Year's resolutions uh, in, a, in a smarter way. Uh, pun intended for those of you that already saw it. So we're going to create a new one here, 4K, so that we have like a super, super high uh, def uh, effect. And let's go to next to live, assets, chair texture. There we go. Perfect. So what's going to happen here, as you can see, is we're going to get two details. Now, we have a very big problem. That's the fact that even though it looks very nice here because it's smoothed, it, it won't be smoothed on, on the, um, what's the word, on Substance Mitch. So we need to actually create like a permanent smooth. So I'm just going to hit smooth again. And once more, it's going to be really dense. Uh, I know that. That's why I mentioned that this technique usually works better for like cinematic and stuff. So I'm going to grab this guy again. Export selection. Share. Export selection. There we go. Now, you don't need to open the project again. You can just go edit project configuration, reselect the object and just hit OK. And it will update it to the to the newest version. 
So we're going to go to texture sets and we're going to do our bake mesh maps. And here's the important thing. As you can see, we have two texture sets. Okay. So, so there's two materials that are going to be baked here and we can select like 4k and just say bake selected textures. And as you can see, we're going to get one specific bake for this guy and one specific bake for the other guy. And the important thing here is the, of course, the, um, what's the word, the ambient occlusion, which is going to really, really help with those like very nice shadows. But as you can see, there's no overlap. There's no overlap because each object knows that it shouldn't be affecting the other one. Now, I did forgot to do another unfold on the UVs to make sure that we don't get those like crisp lines uh, after the smooth. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but just keep in mind that um, it, it might give you like that little artifact right there. That, that's because the, the UVs right now are not, they do not match what we had. So I would need to do another control U to smooth them again. Um, and uh, actually that, that should help. So let's, let's do it real quick. Let's export this again. There we go. And uh, let's just go again to edit, project configuration, select the chair, there we go, okay. And we need to bake the mesh maps again, of course, and bake the selected textures, there we go. So now you can see the, the, the bakes are way, way smoother. Uh, and this is the cool thing about this technique that we're doing. The, the big advantage is that since we have two texture sets, we can independently manage each specific texture, and that way we have more control over the amount of detail that each part is going to have, okay? So let's just wait for this to finish, which is about to finish. should be fairly soon. Remember, um, Adobe Substance 3D Painter uses GPU, so it is accelerator. The bakes are quite fast. So if we go to the chair base, let's just throw in like a... I'm actually going to go to the smart materials and let's use one of the leathers. Remember we we, we had this damaged leather. Uh, was this the one that I showed you how to do? Yes, the damaged leather N. So if you guys want to check this out on the Christmas uh, video a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to create this smart material that, as you can see, adapts very fast or very quickly to one specific element. And as you can see, we get this very, very nice effect on the borders and everything. So let's say that's that's my base, right? And now here's again the great thing about this. Here we're going to be able to manage another texture. Like we can go and look for um, for like a pattern. Let's look for something a little bit interesting like... Uh, like this iron diamond, I'm, I don't know, okay? So now we should be able to go here to the iron diamond uh, texture and tile this as many times as we as we need. Right now, if we tile this like a lot of times, let's say like 40 times, we will see pixelation, okay? Like we will see a little bit of pixelation. However, if you do this on the engine itself, because remember this, is gonna be baked onto a texture. And, and we're not gonna be baking this into a texture. We're gonna be using a, a tile or whatever, right? So um, actually, let me let me show you what I mean by this. But but this is the drill, like this is the main thing. Like by having two texture sets, you're gonna be able to control the resolution of each one of them because you have more control over, over the channels, okay? Super common thing to do. It is a little bit more expensive texture-wise because you're gonna have two materials or two texture sets. But I'm gonna show you real quick here, Marmon said how or why this is so, so important. Okay, so let's go. So now here in Marmon said, let's import uh, the model real quick. So let's go to the chair texture. There we go. So we have this. We don't have the ambient occlusion or anything, but we could. Let's do the like. I always say we could. We could. Let's just do it. It's a new year. We should always be doing cool stuff, right? So I'm gonna export this as an Unreal Engine 4 packed uh, texture, and of course we're gonna export this into our into a project. So what this will do is, of course, we will be exporting the textures um, and we're going to be using, I especially want to use the ones from the chair base because those are like specific textures to the chair. Um, and, and we're going to change the chair details in, in Marmoset. So uh, here, let's just go over here. Assets, chair texture, there we go. So I'm going to go to the chair base and I'm going to plug in the color. There you go, looks good. I'm going to plug in uh, the normal which of course needs to be flipped. There we go. I am gonna plug in the occlusion, roughness and metallic. This is the roughness, so that's the green channel. This is the metallness, that's the blue channel. And down here on the occlusion, we're gonna plug in the red channel. There we go. So now this chair looks exactly the same as it looked in the, in Marmoset. Now, I'm gonna, in Marmoset, in, in substance. I'm gonna go to textures, let's look for a, a material and let's look for some sort of like fabric. Fabric is usually one of those things that really needs a lot of tiles for this to look good. So um, let's see, what would be a nice fabric for this? 
Uh, I don't know. Like this, wool checker. I don't know. Looks fun. <laughs> let's try it. So let's try this wool checker. Let's just wait for this to download. There we go. And I'm just going to double click to add it to my uh, shelf there. There we go. And the only thing I need to do is drop this material into the element right there and boom. So the cool thing about this is there should be up here a texture option and I am able to tile this as many times as I want. Like there's no limit. Look at this. I'm tiling this almost 90 times and I can really, really, really go in there and I'm not going to see pixelation. Why? Because this is a tileable texture. So I can like actually tile this as many times as I need to and I will not lose the finish. What's the only downside of using this technique that you won't be able to texture specific parts of this like checker pattern or the wool pattern? So if let's say I want to add like a little bit of dirt here and stuff, I won't be able to do it because I'm using a tileable texture. And that, that means that I will need to go back here. And yes, another a texture set will give me more resolution, but it won't give me as much like resolution as this one. Like you're you're never gonna get this sort of effect. Like look at that. Look at that. Like we can see each individual thread without losing any sort of quality because we're using tileable textures. Okay. So yeah, this is it, guys. Hopefully you guys uh, get some cool information about this. Again, material sets or texture sets are really really important. They are more expensive because you are gonna be using more channels or or more textures, like more draw calls on your on your engines and on your renders because it needs to it needs to check that each object has like multiple materials, but you will get so, so many cool results. Now, uh, this is not unheard of. I recently worked on a project well, at the mid, like July and August of last year. I worked on a project that is still under NDA um, and uh, we were doing some characters and I can tell you that those characters had 90, 90, 90, like one more than 89, <laughs> 90 materials per character. So each character has had one material because it was done in Udems and we had to do like a super crazy technique to get to work. Um, but yeah, 90 Udems, guys. It, it was crazy, crazy. But the amount of detail that we were able to get was magnificent. Like, just imagine. It was 90 maps at 4K resolution. That's 360K resolution for each character. So you could see like the pore inside of the pore. So it was it was amazing. Great project. So yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully you, um, you find this technique useful. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow for more content. So make sure to, you know, like, share, subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more info. We're very close to finishing some premium courses for you guys. So stay tuned. Make sure to leave. I, I think there's like the little bell icon that you get notifications whenever we uh, post anything. So yeah, make sure to to help us spread the word about this 3D world. Keep on working on your New Year's resolutions and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys.